All right, so uh, during this lesson, we learned that we can use sine, cosine, and tangent, the trigonometric ratios, to find the missing sides of a triangle. Uh, the following exercises are going to show us how we can use those to find the value of x. Um, one of the things that you'll notice <clears throat> is it does say to round to the nearest hundredth, which remember is two decimal places. The other thing that we should notice is that not all trig functions are going to be used for every question. So we have to identify which one we need to actually use. So for example, for number one, the first thing I would do is write SOHCAHTOA. Then if we look, the opposite side is x from the angle. The adjacent side is not labeled at all. And the hypotenuse is given. So we know for sure that we want to have the opposite side in our trig function, so it's not going to be cosine. We also know that we want to have the hypotenuse side in our trig function because it's given to us, so it's not going to be tangent. So to complete question one, we're going to use the sine function. So we know that the sine function is the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's what SO stands for. <clears throat> so now if we plug in what we know, so we know the angle is 42 degrees. We know the opposite side is x, and we know the hypotenuse is 18. If we divide by 1, we can then cross multiply to try and get x by itself. So that's going to give us x equals 18 sine of 42. At that point, we're going to type this into our calculator. So in the calculator, you're just going to type in 18. You don't even have to use the multiplication symbol, but I'm going to. And then put in the sine of 42. If you typed it in correctly, you should get 12.04. <clears throat> For number two. Again, first identify the angle. This is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side. So we have SOHCAHTOA. The opposite side is not given and we don't need it, so I'm going to get rid of anything that has O in it, meaning we're going to use cosine. So we now know that the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we know that the angle is 28, the adjacent side is 6, <clears throat> and the hypotenuse is x. Now this is the first time we've seen the variable be in the denominator. So it's going to be a little bit more algebra to be able to solve for this, but it's really the same idea. So if I divide both sides by 1 and cross multiply, I'm going to have x times the cosine of 28 equals 6. If we then want to get x by itself, we have to divide both sides by the cosine of 28, just like we would do if that was just a number, because it is just a number. x gets eliminated, uh, x is solved for, so now I have x equals whatever this comes out to be in my calculator. So in my calculator, I'm just going to type it in, just like I see it, 6 divided by the cosine of 28. And that gives me 6.795, which is going to round to 6.80. <clears throat> For number three, here's my angle, opposite, adjacent. Notice the hypotenuse is not given. So if we were to look at SOHCAHTOA, so ka. Toa, the only one that does not have hypotenuse is this tangent. So we're going to use the tangent of 63 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. If we cross multiply and solve, <clears throat> I have x equals 34 tangent of 63. Plug that into our calculator. 
34. Tangent of 63, I wind up getting 66.73. For number four, we notice again, here's our angle, opposite. This one's a little tricky. Notice this is the right angle, so that makes this the hypotenuse. So the trig function that is opposite and hypotenuse in it is going to be so. All right, if you look at Ka, we don't have the right information, and Toa, we also don't have the right information. So we're gonna use sine here. <clears throat> so we have the sine of 50 is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So again, we have a variable in the denominator makes things a little bit different here. When I cross multiply, I'm going to get x sine of 50 equals 123. And I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 50. So if I type that in the calculator, I have 123 divided by the sine of 50. I wind up getting 160.60, which makes sense because the hypotenuse should be the longest side compared to 123, 160 is longer. Let's look at five. <clears throat> so five is an example of a word problem. It's the same idea, we just have to make sure that we draw the triangle. Sometimes the triangle is not given to us, in this case it was. It tells us that we have this eight foot rope, so we know that the hypotenuse is gonna be eight. It tells us the rope makes an angle of 57 degrees with the ground, and we wanna know the height of the pole to the nearest 10th of a foot. So the height of the pole we don't know, so that's my x. And that also just so happens to be the opposite side. So if we think, if we use Sokotoa, The only one that has opposite and hypotenuse is his sine. The other two we don't have the information for because we don't want to know that side. That's the adjacent. We don't also care to know it. So we're just going to use sine. So I now know that the sine of the angle is equal to the size of the pole divided by the length of the rope. Cross multiply. And since we labeled x in my picture, I don't have to identify what it is and we just have to type that in the calculator. So I'll do 8 sine of 57. So now we have the length of the pole is going to be 6.7 feet. Again, it says nearest tenth, so that's what we want around to. Here are some regions questions, similar to what we have done in class but just so you can start to see how they're actually going to ask it. <clears throat> so you notice you have one, two, multiple choice, and then two that are not multiple choice. So this topic can come up in various places on the Regents exam. So let's look at number one. Number one says, as shown in the diagram below, the angle of elevation from a point on the ground to the top of the tree is 34. Angle of elevation, we're going to talk about in another uh, lesson. For right now, you just have to understand that's the angle that's in the picture. If the point is 20 feet from the base of the tree, so I know this side is 20, what is the height of the tree? So we don't know the height of the tree, so that's x. So let's label our sides. So I know this is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent, and this is the high, uh, opposite. So now we have to figure out, well, which trig function do we want to use? So if I write so, ka, toa. I don't have the hypotenuse, nor do I want to find it, so it's not either of those two. So we're going to use tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of 34 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So I now know that the height of the tree is 20 tangent of 34. Now we have to be careful when typing this in the calculator because they do try and find um, mistakes in 
the calculator that you might make and they make it those choices like if they you forget to put it in degree mode or you might put in like sine instead of tangent or cosine instead of tangent one of those choices will probably be there but if you type this in correctly you should get 13.5 <clears throat> let's look at two so as a 200 foot support uh, post leans against the wall making a 70 degree angle with the ground so if we have a wall and then a pole leaning against that wall, it makes an angle of 70 degrees here. So it's the nearest tenth of a foot. How far up on the wall is the support post? So we want to know this. And it does tell us that the support post is 20 feet long. So if the post itself is 20 feet long, that's the hypotenuse, right? Because that's where the pole was. So now we have to figure out which trig function to use. So we know this is opposite. This is hypotenuse. So O and H reminds us of so, which tells us we want to use sine. So we're going to say the sine of 70 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cross multiply, we have X equals 20 sine of 70 degrees. Now we just have to plug that in our calculator. So if you do 20 sine of 70, you get 18.79. Now, here's a distractor answer. The answer is not choice three. Because if you round to nearest tenth of a foot like they ask, it's actually going to round up to 0.8. So we want to be very careful on the day of the Regents exam that we don't do silly things like that. Number three <clears throat> gives us this nice diagram. This is a carpenter leans an extension ladder against the house to reach the bottom of a window 30 feet um, above the ground. So it tells us that. Here's your window. <clears throat> it says that the extension ladder makes an angle 70 feet with the ground. Determine the length of the ladder. So I'm going to put X where the length of the ladder would be. So here's my angle. So I know this is opposite. I know this is hypotenuse. So again, we're going to use SOHCAHTOA. So SO is the one that makes sense to use here because we have opposite and hypotenuse. I don't want to use the others because the adjacent side I don't care about. I don't know it and I don't want to know it. <clears throat> so now since we're using sine here, we could go through and say that the sine of 70 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So again, more algebra here because the variable's in the denominator. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to wind up having um, x sine of 70, because I'm multiplying these two things together, is equal to 30. Divide by the sine of 70. And I have x equals whatever that comes out to be in my calculator. So if I do 30, times the sine of 70, I get 28.19. Now it says to nearest foot. So if I get 28.19, the nearest foot is going to be 28 feet. So always look back to what you're supposed to round to. Number four, <clears throat> last question we're going to do together here, and then you guys could try your homework assignment, which is on the next page. So for number four, it says, in the diagram below, a window of a house is 15 feet above the ground. A ladder is placed against the house with its base at a 75-degree angle with the ground. Determine and state the length of the ladder to the nearest tenth of a foot. So again, just like number three, we want to know the length of the ladder. Notice, because they give us the same situation as what they did in number three, we're given the hypotenuse and the opposite again. We know we're going to use sine again. So if we want to use sine again here, we're going to say the sine of 75 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So just like we did in number three, we're going to have more algebra here because of where the variable is. So I have x sine of 75 equals 15. Divide both sides by the sine of 75. And we have x equals whatever that comes out to be in my calculator. So 15 
<clears throat> divided by the sine of 75. And we wind up getting 15.53. So 15.5. And actually, I typed this one in my calculator wrong, so let's look back here at number <clears throat> 3 for a minute. I multiplied. I was supposed to divide. So if we do 30 divided by the sine of 70, that answer actually comes out to be 31.9. Which rounds to 32 feet. <clears throat> Hopefully this video helps. Again, you can try your homework assignment tonight. It looks like this. And um, go over any questions you have tomorrow. Bye.